Here are the top 10 celebs who had their secrets exposed. First off, we have Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian's former media strategist, Shiraz Hassan, alleged that her infamous 2012 flower incident was staged to help promote the perfume that she was launching. In the Channel 4 documentary The Kardashian's Billion Dollar Dynasty, he claims that he told her, okay, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be fine, you're going to be safe, but we're going to create a media moment. If we create media gold, guess what's going to happen? Everyone's going to be talking about your perfume and everyone is going to buy it. If you're confused about this whole situation, let me clear it up for you. In 2012, Kim K was flower bombed at the red carpet launch of her True Reflection perfume. While posing for photos, a woman threw flour all over Kim's body. The assailant was later caught and arrested. However, Kim decided not to press charges. After the incident, Kim told E! Online, that probably is the craziest, unexpected, weird thing that has ever happened happened to me. Meanwhile, Kim's sisters also took to Twitter to defend her. Courtney wrote, I wonder if they would have dared thrown the flower at my hormonal and pregnant self. Chloe then tweeted, I wish I was with my sister tonight. I bet you that woman would not have dared tried a thing. Celebrities including presenter Juliana Rancic also tweeted in support of Kim, but turns out it was all Fake. Next, let's discuss another secret that was revealed about Kim K's mom, Kris Jenner. Kris Jenner's former nanny, Pam Behan, believes the famous momager was, quote, grooming her children for their current celebrity status their entire lives. In her tell-all book, Malibu Nanny, The True Adventures of the Former Kardashian Nanny, Pam wrote, they only wore the cutest clothes from the nicest stores and were always perfectly well-dressed, even at a young age. They were fashion plates and their image was being carefully crafted. I do believe that the success they enjoy now is what she always hoped for and wanted for them and for herself. On Twitter, Timothy Chalamet's agent, Brian Swartstrom, revealed Timmy's big secret that he's never auditioned for anything in more than seven years. The revelation sparked a huge debate about nepotism and privilege in the entertainment industry. Nepo baby is a term used online for somebody deemed to have achieved success only as a result of receiving help from famous or successful family members. The beautiful boy star's uncle is director and producer Rodman Flender, while his mom, Nicole Flender, has been credited as appearing in two movies, including one short film and she was also a very successful Broadway performer. Users on Twitter came to Timothy's defense, one saying, Timothy Chalamet hasn't had to audition for anything in over seven years because he's simply that talented and that in demand. There's no larger conspiracy here and I'm begging some of you to stop talking about this stuff with no knowledge of how the industry actually works. The privilege in question here is Timothy Chalamet's own talent, they added. On the BBC introducing podcast, Ed Sheeran's manager, Stuart Camp, revealed his big secret that every time they draw up a new management contract, Ed Sheeran adds a quote, stupid clause just to wind him up. In 2019, he required Stewart to carry around a picture of the Weasley twins from the Harry Potter movies. Stewart said, quote, I have a little laminated card of those lovely twins. I have to have that with me at all times. It's in my management contract. Stupid things like that. Here are some more secret facts about Ed Sheeran that you probably don't know. He apparently names his guitars. They are called Lloyd, Felix, Cyril, and Nigel. And thinking out loud, Loud is his favorite song of his and Prince Charles is the first celebrity he has ever met. Oprah revealed a huge secret about Mindy Kaling that she was pregnant. Mindy Kaling's A Wrinkle in Time co-star Oprah confirmed that she is expecting her first child while talking to People magazine. My mouth dropped. Winfrey recalled about how she first heard the news while standing in a press line at Disney's D23 Expo. What did you just say? She said, oh Oprah, I I don't think you know, I'm five months pregnant. And I said, what? Mindy Kaling wasn't too bothered by how her baby secret was revealed though, thank goodness. She did announce it, Kaling said on The Ellen Show. I had told Oprah and Reese Witherspoon on a movie that we're working on, A Wrinkle in Time, and she announced it at a press event. She was very excited. If anybody's going to announce big news about your private life, Oprah Winfrey is the person. You can't complain that much about it. 
And you also can't be like, hey Oprah, zip it, because she's almost like a religious figure. So if there's one person I have to tell my daughter about that revealed her existence to the world, Oprah is pretty good. Another pregnancy secret revealed, Britney Spears exposed Zoe Saldana for being pregnant. Spears announced that her former Crossroads movie co-star was expecting two little ones during a 2014 Entertainment Tonight interview. Who knows, that's a very good idea, but she's pregnant with twins right now, she said, so I'm sure she's got a huge future ahead of her, she said when asked if she and Saldana would ever work together again. On an appearance on Watch What Happens Live, Zoe Saldana confirmed that Britney Spears had been the first one to spill the secret. The way that it happened was so interesting. Innocent. I never even thought about holding her accountable to anything, she told host Andy Cohen. We were on the same flight from LA to New York, and we just talked for the duration of the flight. She has two boys, I was having twins, and we had a beautiful talk. And I forgot, it never even occurred to me not to say anything, because we weren't trying to hide it. We were just trying to be discreet. I was shocked because we weren't ready to sort of share it, but it was Britney Spears, so it was okay. Also on the subject of Britney Spears, a former housekeeper of the celebrity pop star, revealed that she struggles with keeping an orderly household and that she is untidy to the extreme. Spears' former maid said she frequently left clothes all about her room and that she even found partially eaten fast food under the furniture. Jennifer Lopez has has been exposed for being a pop diva, and these accusations are shocking. Jane Fonda called out her monster-in-law co-star J.Lo for injuring her on set. On the Drew Barrymore show, she said, the thing that comes to mind right away is that we have a slapping scene. I slap her, she slaps me. Jennifer, as per Jennifer, she had this enormous diamond ring. When she slapped me, it cut open my eyebrow. You know, she's never apologized for it, she concluded. But Jane Fonda is not the only one who has something to say about JLo. Last year, a viral TikTok trend where people told their JLo horror stories went absolutely viral across the internet, and some of these stories are insane. One user said, quote, I served at a restaurant where JLo and Ben Affleck were eating. At the end of the meal, Ben put a $100 bill down as a tip for the waitress. As Jennifer was just about to leave, she grabbed the $100 bill and replaced it with $5. Yikes. Next up, we have Leah Michelle, the Lee Star has been in the news the last few years for her apparent horrible behavior on and off set. Replying to a tweet Leah Michelle made about the Black Lives Matter movement, Glee co-star Samantha Marie Ware wrote, Remember when you made my first television gig a living hell? Cause I'll never forget. I believe you told everyone that if you had the opportunity, you would poo in my wig. Amongst other traumatic microaggressions that made me question a career in Hollywood. Another co-star, Heather Moore, has also had some things to say on Twitter. Was she unpleasant to work with? Very much so. For Leah to treat others with the disrespect that she did for as long as she did, I believe she should be called out. And finally, Davier Snell, who appeared on Glee in 2014, also recounted rude behavior from Leah. He tweeted, Girl, you wouldn't let me sit at the table with the other cast members because I didn't belong there. F U Leah in all caps. Lastly, we have Jennifer Aniston, known as the good girl in Hollywood, Jennifer Aniston seems like she wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, that all changed when Jay Moore, her co-star in 1997's movie Picture Perfect, said that his most awkward interaction with a female co-star ever was, quote, being on the set of a movie where the leading woman was unhappy with his presence and made it clear from day one. Although he never named her name, this was the only movie that fit that description. Maybe he's too scared Aniston's legal team will get involved if he speaks up. He also said, quote, I hadn't done any movies, and even though they screen tested some pretty famous guys, I somehow snaked into the leading role. The actress said, no way, you've got to be kidding me, loudly, between takes, to other actors on set. I would literally go to my mom's house and cry. Three. In at number 10, Bob Saget. Legendary comedian Bob Saget passed away suddenly on January 9th in a hotel room in Orlando. Immediately after his passing, fans were speculating on how he passed. After some investigation, it was reported that there was no foul play or use of substances, that he most likely just passed away of a heart attack or stroke. But the autopsy has just come back, and we know that he actually died of blunt force trauma to the head, a much different story than what was said before. The night before he died, Saget did a show at a concert hall in Jacksonville, Florida. 
Then he was found unresponsive in his room at the Ritz Carlton in Orlando, quote, in a face upward position on his bed, according to a police report. Police are now saying a fall could be the reason, but other experts are claiming the force used is similar to that of a baseball bat, raising even more questions. As of now, Saget's family is blocking the release of any records pertaining to the case over privacy issues, so it seems we may never know what really happened to cause his death. And at number 9, Naya Rivera. Naya Rivera, best known from the show Glee, shocked the world when it was reported that she had gone missing in a lake in July of 2020. She was out on a boat with her young son, and after many hours on the water, the boat returned with only her son on it. Her child was found asleep on the vessel by a boater that afternoon, alongside Rivera's purse, wallet, and ID, but Naya was nowhere to be found. After searching the lake for days, her body was discovered. The Ventura County Sheriff's Department announced on July 13th that they had recovered her body following an extensive search and recovery effort. Since then, her death has been ruled an accident, but for many fans, the whole thing just seems too strange to be true, and unfortunately, we will never know the full story of what happened on the boat that day. And at number 8, Michael Jackson. The King of Pop died suddenly at the age of 50 after suffering a cardiac arrest in June of 2009, but there has been so much mystery around his death, it went from being ruled an OD to a homicide. He was found unresponsive in his home, and it was determined that he ingested too much of a substance. After investigation, his personal physician, Dr. Conrad Murray, was charged with manslaughter, with the courts arguing he prescribed Jackson much more than was needed, and his prescription caused his death. The years after his passing, allegations of inappropriate conduct from former friends of Jackson's came to light. And ever since, fans have been trying to figure out what really happened between Jackson and the kids he would spend time with at his home. The secrets of what truly happened will now never be uncovered. In at number 7, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin is known for a lot of things, specifically being one of the founding fathers of the USA, but it seems he was not always faithful to his wife, and he had a mysterious son with another woman. The son, named William Franklin, was clear he was the son of Franklin's, but notoriously mysterious over who his mother was. Some suspect he was born before Ben married Deborah Reed, making him illegitimate. Another theory is that he cheated on his wife with a mistress, who ended up getting pregnant. William was involved with his father's business and even became noteworthy in his own right for helping his father in his famous kite experiment. He eventually settled in England to distance himself from the family, and when he passed, he never revealed who his mother was. And at number 6, Kurt Cobain. Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain tragically passed away at the age of 27 in 1994 and is a member of the infamous 27 Club. Law enforcement determined that Cobain took his own life, but there was a lot of inconsistencies in his case that led many to speculate that's not actually how he died. A book was even written blaming the whole thing on Cobain's wife, Courtney Love. The book claims that he died of an OD before being shot by Love. A private detective who was hired determined that Love even tried to pay someone to have them kill Cobain for her. This man claimed he was offered $50,000 and even passed a polygraph proving it. Although Love was never officially charged, she is guilty in the court of public opinion, and many fans are convinced she is responsible, but only Cobain knows the truth. In at number 5, Ludwig van Beethoven. On his deathbed, Beethoven wrote a love letter to the love of his life, although he didn't address it to anyone, so we have no idea who this woman was. When he died in 1827, a letter was left to the Germans' immortal beloved. It was later determined that he wrote the letter years before in 1812. Scholars have tried to speculate who his beloved could be, but there is no clear answer. The most likely choice seems to be Antoine Bertinano. She was close with him, mainly because she was actually married to a good friend of his. Others propose Josephine Countess von Brunswick as the most likely candidate because he had written her love letters in the past. It was speculated that since she was poor and of low social standing, he was not allowed to be open about his true feelings for her. Since he never told anyone, only he knows the answer. And at number 4, The Black Dahlia. The Black Dahlia is one of the most infamous cases in LA history. On January 15th of 1947, 22-year-old Elizabeth Short's body was found dead in a vacant lot near a park in LA. The state of her body was the most concerning. Her body was cut in half and all the blood was drained from it. Her body was also perfectly clean, so no evidence was able to be collected from it. There was only one witness that was any help to police. The person claimed they saw a black sedan parked in the area the night before. Since her passing, there have been tons of theories about how or why it happened. And even though so much time has passed, nobody has ever been charged for the crime. Today, the Black Dahlia case remains one of the oldest cold case files in LA, as well as the city's most famous. And number 3, Prince. Prince is one of the most legendary singers of all time, who made a huge impact on the industry, but his shocking death left many with unanswered questions, and many fans are still convinced we don't know the full story. 
On April 21st of 2016, he was found unresponsive in an elevator at the Paisley Park studio. Initially, the police marked it as an accident because when he passed away, he had many substances in his system. No charges were filed against anyone, even though many Prince's fans do not believe he would have done this. Years later, there are still no definitive answers, specifically no idea how he got these substances and how he was able to ingest so much. According to sources that knew him very well, he didn't use any of these substances and had no intentions to start. Because there's still so many unanswered questions, the case remains open. And the number two, George Reeves. In 1959, actor George Reeves was killed under very mysterious circumstances. He made a name for himself playing Superman in the 1950s TV show, Adventures of Superman. But his career was cut short after he was killed. At the age of 45, he was killed by a shot to the head. The strange death was then labeled as him taking his own life. But many fans do not believe this could be the case. It was rumored that he was intentionally killed or the death was completely accidental. To add even more strangeness, the death happened while Reeves was with three other people, including his fiance. But even though all those people most likely witnessed what actually happened, none of them ever told. And finally, at number one, Nicole Brown Simpson. One of the most talked about cases of all time is the case of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Their death started the case of OJ Simpson that would become the trial of the century. Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman were killed outside Simpson's Redwood, California condo in 1994. After some investigation, it was clear that OJ, her ex-husband, was the prime suspect. His DNA had been found at the crime scene and witnesses saw him leaving the scene of the crime that night. After an intense and highly publicized trial, he was found not guilty. And with no other suspects considered, the person responsible is still out there. Although many people are convinced that OJ is the person who did it, and lucky circumstances are the real reason he got off. At number 10, we have Jia Kim and Sang Hun Lee. The two starred alongside each other in the new spin off series XO Kitty. Spoiler alert if you haven't watched it yet, they both played the semi potential love interests of the main character Kitty, and their performances and respective characters were well received by viewers. It became quite the story when they revealed that they are actually siblings in real life. In a podcast, Gia shared how she first received notice to audition for the show, which she then shared forward to her younger brother, sang -hun. She was already in the running to play Yuri, while sang forgot about it altogether and only had three days left until the audition's deadline. Luckily for him, his sister pestered him to get it done, and the rest is history. Gia Kim was actually a given stage name that she picked, and she was auditioning from LA while her brother still lived in Korea. The odds of them both being cast was slim to none, but they made it happen. At number 9, we have Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra. The couple surprised us all when they welcomed their first baby into the world last year. This came as a shock because these news came out of nowhere. In 2021, during the Jonas Brothers family roast, Priyanka joked about how they were expecting, but little did viewers know she was actually telling the truth. The birth came via surrogate, which is how they were able to conceal any and all pregnancy news so easily from the world. They welcomed a little girl named Malti Marie and couldn't be happier to their new addition. On a joint statement shared on both star social media accounts, it read, We are overjoyed to confirm that we have welcomed a baby via surrogate. We respectfully ask for your privacy during this special time as we focus on our family. Thank you very much. They received tons of praises and congratulations from fans and other celebrity friends of theirs. Baby Malti had a bit of a rough start upon her first few hours as a newborn as she had to remain in the ICU or intensive care unit for 100 days. Fortunately, that is all she needed as she was then taken home and has been growing healthy ever since. Priyanka would often post pictures of their daughter but made sure to cover her face entirely. That was until January this year when she made her first public appearance at the Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony. Nick and his brothers Joe and Kevin were anointed their own plaques along the tourist driven road. Next on the list we have Elon Musk and Grimes. Okay, so we all know their first kid's name is X something, or apparently it's pronounced X Ash A12. The internet was up in flames when their poor kid was first announced, but did you know they had another kid? Because I didn't. Their second child, a daughter, was literally born a year later, but this made little to no noise. Maybe it's because her name is more normal compared to her older brother. Her name is Exa Dark Sidereal. I'm gonna be honest, that's kind of a fire name because it sounds like the name of a sci-fi character. 
character. But despite this very unique name, Grimes just refers to her as Y. Why? Well, if I told you that by simply asking that answers your question, would you believe me? Because that's literally why. On Twitter, she tweeted, she's why now, or why, or just a question mark, but the government won't recognize that. Curiosity, the eternal question, and such. Meaning, she wants people to question why she's called why. Okay, I've said the word why so many times at this point, the word is no longer real to me. At number seven, we have Macaulay Culkin and Brenda Song. Honestly, it came as quite the shocker when I found out these two were together. But they've been together since at least 2017, and if they're happy, we're happy. They're also very private and only share very little to their social media. So in 2021, when they welcomed their first child, Dakota, into the world, people were very surprised. The only statement they made regarding their firstborn was, we are overjoyed, and that's that's all that really needs to be said. A year later, Macaulay's brother, actor Kieran Culkin, shared the news about baby number two. Brenda described her and Macaulay's parenting as very hands-on. They don't have a nanny, but they do get help from Brenda's mother often. Brenda shared how she would go to work, her mother and Dakota would come on set for feeding and bonding time. So now with a new baby, they definitely got the hang of it. The actress advised that parenting doesn't have to be about assigning certain chores to each other. They learned that communicating is their top priority as that's the only way you can acknowledge and resolve problems. At number six, we have Florence Pugh and Toby Sebastian. Did you know Florence had a sibling? If you did, how did you even figure that out? Toby Sebastian is her older brother who found his own success in the acting industry. He's best known for his roles on The Game of Thrones and The Music of Silence. He's also a singer and songwriter. A couple of years ago, he came out with a song titled Midnight where he featured his younger sister. The song is a soft duet with a guitar accompaniment. If you're into songs that sound like they'd play at a bookstore or a cute cafe, I highly recommend it. When asked about collaborating with Florence, he said, we've always grown up collaborating collaborating as a family, which is kind of the beauty of this song, and now the video that we've created. So anyone who dares say he featured her simply because of her status, do not listen to them because they clearly don't know what they're talking about. He actually credited their mom for even suggesting the idea in the first place. Within 20 minutes in the studio with no rehearsal came their little song. Next at number five, we have Phil Collins. When I found out that actress Lily Collins is the daughter of singer Phil Collins, I had to sit down for a second. because. Collins is a very common name. I never thought they were related. There was barely any association with the two to begin with, so you can't blame me for being shocked. Now that isn't to say there wasn't any type of Nepo baby privileges that came unnoticed, but clearly Lily managed to have a career in her own name. We'll talk about her Nepo privileges another time. As it turns out, she isn't his only successful kid either. In total, he has five children, including Lily, and most of them are successful in their own career paths. His eldest daughter, Jolie, started her own own production company. His eldest son, Simon, is a musician taking after his father's profession. Simon said that Phil provided his earliest music education by giving him albums to listen to. His fourth, Nick, is also looking into a musical career and started his own band called Better Strangers. As for his youngest, Matthew, it's a mystery, but there's no doubt he has an endless supply of connections in the entertainment industry if he really wanted. And he's still young, so he has time. At number four, we have Snoop Dogg and Brandy. The two cut Cousins, yes, you heard that right, cousins, have their own successful music careers spanning decades. In case you've been living under a rock, Snoop Dogg is a rapper with a personality higher than life, if you know what I mean. Whereas Brandy is a singer, songwriter, and actress most known for her R&B sound and for playing iconic roles such as Cinderella. Usually when we find out that celebrities are cousins, it tends to fall on the distant cousin type of way. But these two are actually first cousins. Their respective music careers were always separate as they never used each other to boost themselves within the industry. That's because they didn't need to as they both managed to create their own solid fan bases throughout the 90s. But finally in 2009, Brandy was featured on Snoop Dogg's 10th album, Malice in Wonderland. They collabed in his song titled Special, where she provided the vocals for. Next on the list, we have Andy McDowell and Margaret Qualey. Some fans of the Netflix series Made didn't believe it when it was revealed that the mother-daughter duo on the show were mother and daughter in real life. Most of it came from their names, clearly as Margaret's stage name doesn't take after her mother's. But nonetheless, they were praised for their believable chemistry on the show, which now makes sense. Andy reassured fans that while there's so much tensity on the show, their real life relationship is very different. Unlike the animosity and toxic relationship between their characters, Andy and Margaret are 
are actually really close. She also shared how they spend a lot of time together anyways, so being able to work around these new types of emotions with each other wasn't very hard. And before you scream nepotism on Margaret, you'd be right, but instead of booking the role via her mother, it was the other way around. Margaret had already secured the main role and suggested to the showrunners that her mother be cast alongside her. At number two, we have Steven Spielberg and Jessica Capshaw. While they're not blood related, they definitely are a family, a Hollywood family at that, with Steven's more than obvious big name in the industry and Jessica known as the infamous and beloved Dr. Arizona Robbins from Grey's Anatomy. And no, they're not married. Steven is her stepfather. Kate Capshaw, Jessica's mother, is his second and most recent wife and they're still married to this day. They met in the early 90s on set of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which he directed because duh, and Kate starred in it. It was reported that despite having these big connections, because her stepfather is literally the biggest director of all time, she decided not to use them and paved her own way. She got her Bachelor of Arts degree for English Studies and then enrolled herself in a prestigious performing arts Arts program in London. Now whether Steven had some role in getting her into these schools is unclear, but seeing as many don't know they're associated together like that, I think not. And finally at number one we have Michael Sarah. Last year it was revealed that he and his wife Nadine became new parents. Well it was less revealed and more so exposed by Amy Schumer. It was an accident, but Michael confirmed it days after her interview was released. Michael was known for keeping his personal life private, as his wedding was low profile too. The only reason reason people realized the two were married was when they were spotted wearing similar wedding bands on their fingers. And even then the media came to a conclusion that they probably got married sometime in 2018. All we know about their kid is that he's a boy and that's pretty much it. Michael did open up more about how being a father changed his life in more ways than one. He said it changed his perspective on life as he became a real family man. In an interview he said, so when I was 20 I would have been way happier to go off to some weird city and live in a hotel for three months months. And when you have kids, you want to be with your family and you miss them a lot. Starting off this countdown in no particular order, we have Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson's dad, Charles Harrelson, was an American hitman and organized crime figure. Yes, you heard me correctly. Beloved actor Woody Harrelson had a father who was a cold-blooded killer. He was just seven at the time when his father first went to prison. It's said that he was responsible for the deaths of at least 20 people. In 1979, that is when Charles committed his biggest kill of all time. He took out a federal judge by the name of Judge John H. Wood Jr. He was the first federal judge to be killed in the 20th century. He was paid $250,000 to kill off this judge. It was because a drug dealer was about to be sentenced by this judge who was known as Maximum John because he always gave out really harsh punishments to drug dealers. So he got Charles to knock him off for him. But this landed him behind bars and in solitary confinement. He was there until he was 69 when he died from a heart attack. Obviously, Woody does not want to be defined by his father's actions. In our ninth spot, we have Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin is one of the few actors who actually grew up in a cult. He was born into the commune of Children of God. But when he was four years old, his parents managed to escape the cult and move. That's actually why they changed their last name to Phoenix, as it symbolizes rebirth, since they were able to leave this cult and start a new life. Unfortunately, he also lost his brother at a young age. In 1993, his brother River Phoenix died from an dose. Joaquin witnessed this happen and he was the one that called 911. In our eighth spot today we have Phil Lewis. Phil Lewis is best known for his role of Mr. Mosby on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and I freaking love that show. Like it was honestly my childhood. Well before his Disney Channel days he actually killed someone. In December of 1991 Lewis fatally hit a 21 year old woman. She passed away from her injuries from the hit. It was found that Lewis was driving while intoxicated. His blood alcohol levels were three times the legal limit of intoxication. As a result, he was convicted of a DUI as well as manslaughter. He was sentenced to five years in prison, two years probation, and 350 hours of community service. But he managed to only serve one year in prison. I guess Disney was able to overlook his past when he auditioned for Mosby on the show. In our seventh spot today, we have Tim Allen. Now, if you look at Tim Allen, you think, aw, he's such a family man. I love Home Improvement and Toy Story. He's a great actor. Well, Tim Allen actually had quite a dark past before he got into acting. In 1978, Allen was arrested for attempting to traffic more than 650 grams of 
Network. He was arrested in Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport. Now, he actually would have served a lifetime in prison, but he avoided this by giving police information about other dealers. As a result, his sentence was reduced to three to seven years. He ended up serving two years and four months in prison and then was granted parole in 1981. I guess that's why they say don't judge a book by its cover because he looks like a wholesome dad, not a drug trafficker. In our sixth spot, we have Jack Nicholson. In 1974, Time Magazine discovered that Jack's sister, June, was actually his mother, not his sister. How wild is that? So June was only 17 when she became pregnant with Jack, and she wasn't married, so her parents agreed to raise the child as their own, with Jane and Lorraine acting like his older sisters. So his parents were actually his grandparents, and his sister Lorraine was his aunt. In regards to his dad, we don't know for sure who is his dad, but some say it was likely June's manager. Other sources claim June really just doesn't know who the father was. By the time Jack found this all out, his mom, June, and his grandma had already passed away. Imagine how that would have changed his life. Like he was raised on a lie. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Sean Penn. A number of women have come forward saying that Sean Penn has been aggressive towards them. In fact, he has mistreated a number of his partners, including Madonna. They were married from 1985 to 1989. While in December of 1988, Penn allegedly tied Madonna to a chair and held her hostage for nine hours and apparently hit her multiple times. When he untied her to let her use the bathroom, she fled to the police station. One officer said, and I quote, Madonna staggered into the station. She was distraught, crying, with makeup smeared all over her face. I hardly recognized her. She had obviously been struck. Sean was charged with inflicting corporal injury and traumatic conditions on Madonna, as well as battery. But Madonna withdrew her complaint a week later and has rarely commented on it since, which is quite odd. Why would she say that he harmed her and then retract the statement? So who knows what really happened? Happened. Moving on to number four, we have Leighton Meester. Now, I personally did not know this, but Blair Waldorf, aka Leighton Meester, wasn't always the queen bee of Manhattan. In fact, she was born in prison. Basically, her mom was serving a sentence after smuggling a lot of marijuana out of Jamaica with the help of Leighton's dad and Aunt Judy. All of them ended up behind bars. In fact, her aunt managed to escape prison and became America's first woman on the US Marshals 15 most wanted list. How insane is that? In the end, Leighton's grandmother raised her while her mom served 16 months in prison. Thank gosh she didn't follow in her family's footsteps. In our third spot, we have Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken was involved in a death that is just shrouded in mystery. On November 29th, 1981, 43 year old actress Natalie Wood was found dead, floating face down in the Pacific Ocean. She was on a yacht with her husband Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken when this happened. The thing is, no one really knows what happened to her. Some say she slipped off the deck and fell into the water, while others are convinced that her husband or Christopher Walken had something to do with it, or that they know what happened. One theory is that Natalie and Christopher were having an affair. Wagner found out about it, got mad, and pushed her off the yacht. Now, Wagner seems to be the prime suspect, but many Many people think that Walken knows exactly what happened. I mean, he barely even talks about the case, and on the rare occasion that he did, he would call in an accident, and also, he was absent from the documentary about her. All I'm gonna say is, someone knows something. I'm getting the vibe that Walken knows what happened, and maybe he just feels guilty about it. In our second spot, we have Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron actually had a very traumatic upbringing. Her dad struggled with alcohol addiction and would constantly threaten Charlize and her mom, Gerda. He would never physically hurt her, but he would hurt Gerda. One night in June of 1991, he got angry and fired shots at both of them. During that altercation, Gerda ran and grabbed her own handgun that she had kept hidden and shot him back. Her shots killed him while Charlize watched it all unravel. In the end, it was declared self-defense and Gerda never faced any charges. But think how trauma traumatizing that must have been for her to see her mother shoot and kill her dad as a teenager. And in our number one spot today, we have Ashton Kutcher. Now, I never do this, and I was incredibly shocked when I found out about it. But on February 21st of 2001, Ashton Kutcher went over to his then-girlfriend's house, Ashley Elrin. The two had planned on going to a post-Grammy party, but when he knocked on the door, there was no answer. That's because Ashley was dead on the floor of her home. She had been stabbed 47 times by a man named the Hollywood Ripper. He was responsible for the death of up to 10 women. As a result, 
Ashton Kutcher lost his girlfriend very suddenly and in a very traumatic way. He was also scared that he was going to be a suspect in the murder investigation since his fingerprints were on her door, but he never was. But he did have to testify in court. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Just let me know, did you know any of these secrets? I only knew a couple of them. The rest I was completely shocked. Number 10, there are substances on set. Actors using substances on set is nothing new. A lot of people are pretty sure that Seth Rogen smokes his herbs and spices on set constantly, something he's admitted to doing before, but not as often as the internet makes it out to be. However, in the earlier days of Hollywood, substances were not only done on set, they were encouraged by the studios, who would regularly feed their actors their narcotic of choice on set. In fact, John Belushi from the Blues Brothers was such an avid consumer of no-no snow that the price of powder was built into the budget for the 1980 flick. No wonder he's in sunglasses all day. If he took them off, he'd look like he just got pepper sprayed or something. I don't know what happens when you do that stuff. I'm a good boy, I promise. Facts are that this still takes place to this day. Now, I have signed a few NDAs in my time as a locations PA, so I cannot specify who does what and where, but the amount of celebrities that surprisingly love that no-no snow is astonishing. No wonder so many people deliver great performances, it's because they amp themselves up in a bathroom for five minutes before every scene. Number nine, Jim Carrey's origins. A Canadian legend, Jim Carrey is considered one of the greatest modern comedians of all time. He famously released three films in the year 1995, Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, and Ace Ventura, all of which made millions at the box office and still hold up to this day, except for a couple scenes in Ace Ventura, but we won't get into that. As many know, comedians tend to have a pretty rough backstory as the best comedy comes from a place of pain. Over the years, Jim has come clean about his strange but fun upbringing. His family struggled financially and he grew up watching his mother struggle with depression, which he claims to have been passed down to him. Despite his energy, he was a bit of a recluse growing up, and apparently he spent hours in his room making faces in the mirror instead of hanging out with his friends. After dropping out of high school to work a full-time job, Jim and his family were actually forced to live in a Volkswagen van together, becoming homeless for a short period of time. He went on to attempt a career in comedy, at first to minimal success, but of course he was able to find his footing and made his place in comedy history. Number 8. There are ties to the Mafia the film industry may be a multi-billion dollar business, but where did they get that first bit of cash from to get where they are today? Well, apparently Hollywood has a dark history that's tied to organized crime families. The Trocadero, or the Troc, was a famous spot on the Sunset Strip back in the day. With many celebrities coming through the doors, along with studio heads and notorious mob leaders like Mickey Cohen, who was a regular at the establishment. He was a man who rubbed elbows with many of Hollywood's A-list. In fact, the the film Texas Chainsaw Massacre, released in the 1970s, was released by Bryanston Pictures, a company heavily linked to several crime families. While the production studio ended up going bankrupt, Hollywood is still filled with many people doing secret deals. I bet all of the money in my savings account that they had something to do with this Barbenheimer nonsense. Now that's not a lot of money, but the mob runs the memes. Confirmed. Number 7. Woody Harrelson's Father Woody is best known in Hollywood as the wildest wild child ever to exist. He eats raw meat, he's an eco-crusader, he's a protester against violence, and an advocate for the legalization of herbs and spices in the United States. He's loved on screen, but did you know that his father took people out for money and I'm not talking about on dates? That's a different job. Charles Harrelson was sentenced to two lifetime sentences for the slaying of a federal judge in San Antonio. And prior to that charge, Charles had previously been acquitted for the slaying of Alan Berg, who was a carpet salesman. And he was convicted of the slaying of Sam Degalia. He's not the greatest hitman of all time. His track record will prove that. The evidence shows that Charles is not the greatest hitman of all time. Woody doesn't speak much of his father these days, and opting instead to leave his family's trouble in the past. He does, however, say that the one piece of advice that his father ever gave him that he still uses to this day is always keep an open mind. Charles knew all about opening minds with bullets. Number six, they have backups of A-listers. There have been many rumors over the years that Hollywood likes to clone their best and brightest on the off chance that they'll need them again following their ultimate demise. According to the internet, Paul Rudd actually got to star alongside his clone in the show Living With Yourself. Now, Paul has of course claimed that the performance was achieved with CGI and filming one character one day and another the next, but Paul Rudd is also 54 years old and looks like that, so something is not right about this. Now, there is a theory out there 
there that the celebrity elites are made up of lizard people who take the form of actors and singers to influence us. And Paul is thought to be one of those lizard people. Now, I don't believe this theory. I'm just sharing something cool that I found on the internet. But it would be awesome if there were two Paul Rudds. In fact, that would be the most chill way to find out that cloned people exist. Just Paul being like, Hi, I'm Paul. And hi, I'm also Paul. Everything's gonna be fine. Number five, Mark Wahlberg should be in jail. Maki Mack and a Funky Bunch hit the rap scene in 1991, and despite sounding like the title of a cheesy kids show, the crew had a small following and garnered a bit of success. Enough for leading man Mark Wahlberg to be spotted and picked up by Hollywood to star in The Corrupter, a 1999 action flick that sees Mark play the leading man Danny Wallace, a police officer who attempts to stop substance trafficking and corruption by the Chinese triads. He's had a successful acting career that has recently been declined in quality, but he's still acting and he looks jacked at the age of 52, so please don't hurt me, Mark. Infinite was just hard to watch. Growing up in Boston, he was the youngest of nine children and was relentlessly bullied by his fellow siblings. His parents divorced when he was very young, and he became addicted to No No Snow by the time he was in his mid teens. He dropped out of high school and was eventually arrested when he was just 18 for attempting to slay two Vietnamese men. Apparently, he was walking home late one night under the influence of a hallucinogen narcotic when he spotted the men. Close friends at the time have confirmed that Mark had a racial biased upbringing which caused him to be instantly aggressive towards anyone who just wasn't white. He attempted to swing a large log at them which did make contact and knocked one of the men unconscious. He was eventually released after serving only 45 days of his two year prison sentence and he vowed to change his life. Now so far he's kept that promise and I can personally confirm that he's very polite and patient because he actually watched a movie at the theater I used to work at. He does travel with a crew of five people at all times surrounding him. It's a bit intimidating, just a little. Number four, Margot Robbie may be crazy. Margot may be a perfect Barbie on screen, but apparently behind the scenes, she might be a psychopath. In a recent interview with BBC Radio 1, Margot reminisced about a little prank that she pulled on an old babysitter that involved kitchen cutters, which is the word I'm forced to use for the thing that you cut tomatoes with. Apparently, Margot had just gotten a new babysitter, a much older woman that just apparently wasn't as cool as Talia. So she hatched a plan of sweet, sweet revenge. After a particularly trying day where Margot refused to take a bath, she decided to kick the old lady out for good. She grabbed ketchup, her stabby jabby things, and laid face down on the kitchen tiles. You know, the old I've been stabbed routine. As you may expect, her babysitter walked in, took one look, screamed, and just ran out the door. Traumatized, the woman quit and Margot successfully got her old babysitter back. But that is messed up. That is so messed. And Margot was like young when she did this. Like it's a very dark place for someone's mind to go so early on in their life. Has she secretly been a little bit crazy this whole time? It might explain why she was so good as Harley Quinn. Number three, Tim Allen's hobbies. Tim Allen is the voice of Buzz Lightyear and the star of ABC's popular sitcom Home Improvement, which premiered in 1991. While he may have played a family man on TV, many fans may not know that Tim was a smuggler of no-no snow in the early 1970s. According to Tim, he got mixed up with some bad people back in the day while he was selling certain substances on the street for a few bucks. In 1978, Tim was arrested in Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport Port, what a name! And was caught with more than 650 grams, 1.4 pounds of no no snow. Unfortunately for Tim, state legislators had just passed a law that tied a life sentence to any conviction of selling 650 grams or more. Like, as he was being arrested, there was a guy in a car with him, like, and if you have 650 grams, you're a goner. However, that sentence was never served as it was revealed that Tim was set up by an undercover police officer who had been following him for months. Months. Due to this and Tim's cooperation in providing the names of fellow dealers to the authorities, it led to him receiving a lighter conviction that allowed him to be sentenced in a federal court instead of a state, so being able to ignore that new policy entirely. His information led to 20 arrests and the sentencing of a major dealer. Can that be a movie, please? 
Number two, CGI'd before they pass. Unfortunately, computers are not only making everyone's lives easier when it comes to looking cool on screen, but they're also being used in some of the creepiest ways ever. So, the first example of someone being CGI'd into a movie following their passing was Carrie Fisher. And I do mean first to have a speaking line and be a significant character. Rise of Skywalker did not heavily feature her, but the fact that they had that ready to go so fast after she passed, it was super unnerving. They they pulled this with Stan Lee too in one of his last on-screen cameos, and Marvel was going to do this with Chadwick Boseman in the sequel to Black Panther, but the studio changed their minds last minute and thank the good lord. But not only is Hollywood prepared to CGI their people into movies, they seem to have inside knowledge of when it's going to happen. With the new addition of AI into the world of film, we're close to Hollywood not even needing actors anymore and just asking the computer to make Tom Cruise do stunts. Deep fake tech technology is also getting better and better, making it extremely difficult to tell if a video is authentic or just some CGI shenanigans. Nope, still just me. Number one, they're all broke. That's right, despite it being one of the most lucrative industries in the world, most of Hollywood's actors, writers, directors aren't as well off as we may think. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past month, most of Hollywood is closed right now as its staff are on strike. Some of the toppest of tier actors have joined their crew in solidarity, not stopping until Hollywood's producers and big budget studios start sharing the money that they make. Actor Sean Gunn gave an interview this last week where he mentions working on a show currently streaming on Deflix, a show that has made over $4 million in residuals of which he's received basically nothing. This type of financial woe extends to a ton of people in Hollywood, and I just wanted to take this moment to wish luck to anyone out there on the picket lines. Hollywood, pay your people, and everyone holding a sign or waiting for the strike to end, get what you're worth, and get back to making the world a better place. And those are some of the dark secrets living in the world of Hollywood today. Number 10 is Joe Jonas. Jonas Brothers' Joe Jonas spoke with Wonderland Magazine in May 2019 about the struggles of being a Disney Channel star alongside his brothers. Joe made it clear how Disney was a saving grace for the trio when he said, quote, When we were getting started, we were in a position at one point where we were without a label and we didn't really know what the next steps were going to be. And Disney reached out with a huge opportunity for us to be signed by them and work on a TV show. This was kind of a saving grace for us in that point of our career and we jumped on that opportunity. But still, Joe went on to say, quote, as you get older and you're a young adult and you're still on the Disney Channel, that can feel a little uncomfortable. Creatively, you can feel like you're a little boxed in and you can't really expand and grow. Lyrically, what you're going through in that time in your life, you have to protect your audience by only writing what Disney would approve. It was a little bit tricky as we got older, that's for sure. But that's just the music. While chatting with Vulture way back in 2013, Joe called out the Disney Channel for its apparently terrible writing and strict rules for their film projects. He said, quote, it just ended up being some weird slapstick humor that only a 10 year old would laugh at. They took out the kissing scene that Nick had. I had to shave every day because they wanted me to pretend like I was 16 when I was 20. When the show was done, I cut my hair off and grew as much of a beard as I could. We went along with it at the time because we thought Disney was our only real shot. And we were terrified that it could all be taken away from us at any moment. Now that is the truth of the matter. Disney child stars are all terrified of having Disney pull the rug out from under them, but that'll become more obvious as we continue on. At number 9 today is Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus was probably one of the most popular of the Disney stars with Hannah Montana, where she played a dual life. While the popularity of her show is a huge reason for her popularity now, that doesn't mean it's all peaches and cream. Speaking with Marie Claire back in 2015, the actress and singer explained how being Hannah Montana impacted her mental health, saying, quote, I was told for so long what a girl is supposed to be from being on Hannah Montana. I was made to look like someone that I wasn't, which probably caused some body dysmorphia because I had been made pretty every day for so long. And then when I wasn't on that show, I was like, who the F am I? That really spells out the effects of being a child star. In a February 2019 interview on the RuPaul What's the Tea podcast, Miley elaborated on her disillusion with herself when she said, quote, I didn't really get to be a kid very much because I worked so much, but I wanted 
wanted that. Since the last record, my last record was called Younger Now, and it says, even though it's not who I am, I'm not afraid of who I used to be. That was my epiphany. Number eight, Dylan Sprouse. If you weren't aware, Cole and Dylan Sprouse were two Disney Channel heavyweights with The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and The Sweet Life on Deck. But instead of the network pulling the rug out from under them, it was actually the twins that turned their back on Disney. For some pretty understandable reasons, too. Dylan Sprouse revealed the real reason why he and his twin brother, Cole Sprouse, left the network while speaking with Vulture in December 2017. Dylan spoke about how the pair had, quote, a really awesome idea for where the show needed to go. But when they brought that idea to the higher ups at Disney, their idea was ultimately turned down. Speaking on that in the same interview, he said, quote, We were 18. If that isn't old enough to know exactly what the show needs, then, well, I would beg to disagree. I don't think Disney were willing to work with us really ever, so we stopped the show. And honestly, that's kind of punk as hell. Stick it to the man, Dylan. Good job. Number seven, Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne may be one of the most outspoken ex-Disney stars. During a February 2021 interview with Fox News, she said, quote, there are definitely a lot of pressures in the Disney eye to be so perfect, and I think that's where Disney, in a sense, goes wrong, because they make their kids seem perfect. That image is very difficult. It's also never been me. I always just like to do what no one else is doing. She would go on to say, quote, little kids growing up don't need to see perfect people. People. Kids need to see real people. They need to see diversity. They need to see intriguing. Bella opened up about another Disney instance during a podcast interview, which is completely different, called High Low with M. Rada in December 2022. Recalling a time when, well, quote, I almost got fired off the Disney Channel because I was 14 and I wore a two-piece on the beach. According to her, there was a fan that got a photo and when that photo went into the World Wide Web, people began to put Disney under pressure to fire the actress. She said, quote, Obviously, Disney didn't fire me, but also they were like, hey, we're getting a lot of heat for this. Everyone's getting a lot of heat for this because you're in a bikini on the beach. Which is when apparently they said, quote, So she needs to make sure she goes out in board shorts and a loose t-shirt next time she's at the beach. She continued on, quote, They said, You're lucky Bella has such a fan base that we can't afford to fire her at this moment in time, but if she does one more other thing, we'll fire her. But I didn't even talk about when a Disney casting director also fired Bella because they thought the 10 year old was flirting with them. What even is that? What? Number six, Stephanie Scott. While she had released music and acted a little bit before her time at Disney, Stephanie Scott played the role of Lexi Reed on Disney Channel's Ant Farm from 2011 to 2014, which won her a second Young Artist Award and introduced her to a wider audience. While on Disney, she also recorded a bunch of Disney Channel promotional singles, which were released between 2008 and 2012. However, despite her success and time with Disney, in a 2015 interview, Interview with BuzzFeed, the actress threw some major shade at the network. She claimed that her role as Lexi Reed forced her to quote, sugarcoat everything all the time. She said, quote, that's one of the hardest things, not being able to express myself in a certain way or being stuck having to promote something or say something I don't believe in. It's kind of hard after a while when you are feeling things and having a rough time in your personal life and you can't express your emotions through your work. Which heavily echoes the feelings of the other stars on this list. Stephanie explained, quote, I wanted to tell stories of troubled girls where everything isn't perfect all the time. I didn't want it to stop there and be labeled as a Disney girl. I quickly realized I wanted to do more. If you've been on a Disney show, people target you as being the sitcom funny girl who can't take herself seriously and doesn't really have true emotions because they have to be perfect and pure, not shattered and torn in any way. Number five, Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato opened up about her time on the network to Harper's Bazaar in March 2020 and admitted that they had a hard time with the Disney workload, which, as a kid, was likely way more than normal. They covered themselves at first by saying, quote, I'm grateful for the opportunities that I got, but despite that, they also said, quote, do I wish that I'd had more downtime? Yes. I think when you are a teenager and you're given your big break, you'll do anything to make it happen. I do feel that a lot of the way some of my life was handled and lived led me to kind of having a bit of a downfall just because I was so overworked and I wasn't dedicating enough time to my mental health or my personal life. Now, while she didn't so much speak about the restrictiveness of the network like the other stars have, she spoke more about the effect of imposing a celebrity lifestyle onto a growing human being. And in a separate interview with Billboard from 2016, Demi joked that they had PTSD after leaving the channel. They added, quote, we joked around that it was Disney High, 
except we were all shooting shows and really overworking ourselves. Number four, Selena Gomez. Just like a lot of other Disney stars, Selena Gomez, who got her Disney fame from being the main character of Disney Channel's Wizards of Waverly Place, felt that her time at Disney started to paint her as someone who she wasn't, like almost everyone else on this list. When speaking with the New York Times in 2015 about moving away from that image, she said, quote, I'm growing and changing. I was in a relationship and I was being managed by my parents and I was still under Hollywood and Disney. And I was being held to this expectation of being the good girl. She continued, I knew deep down that this wasn't what I wanted to do. Being exhausted, forcing something that wasn't right, even in my personal life, I had to have moments where I was crying and I was like, why am I not in love with what I do? I was forced to get very uncomfortable for a while in order to make the decisions I made. Now while that seems pretty much par for the course here, quite some time later during the Television Critics Association press panel in August 2021, she elaborated on what I personally think is the main issue with becoming a Disney child star. She said, quote, I signed my life away to Disney at a very young age and I didn't know what I was doing because you know, she was a kid. Number three, Coco Jones. Coco Jones starred in the Disney Channel original movie, Let It Shine, which is where she found her primary Disney Channel successes. But she also had recurring roles on two Disney series, So Random and Good Luck Charlie, competed in Radio Disney's The Next Big Thing singing competition, and signed with Hollywood Records music label, which is owned by Disney. But then, kind of as soon as it all started, it began to unwind. In a 2020 YouTube live stream, she revealed that a Let It Shine sequel was planned, but that it was canceled for reasons completely unknown to her. She was also apparently supposed to get her own show, which also never came to be. Hollywood Records, though, seemed to be the main cause for concern here. They dictated what the celeb could wear, say, and sing, and the people that the network supplied her to work with wanted her to sound, quote, sellable which is a term that is up to interpretation by you guys. She put out a few singles and an EP, but right before her actual album was supposed to drop with the record label, the label dropped her. And apparently they told Coco, quote, we don't know what to do with you. At that point in her life, she was homeschooled after dropping out to make Disney and her career her priority. Afterwards, she understandably dealt with depression, but with the support of her parents, she graduated high school early and moved to LA. Going forward, she booked the role of Hilary Banks on Bel Air, signed a new record deal with High Standards and Def Jam Recordings, and dropped her major label debut single, Caliber. So good job. Number two, Ashley Tisdale. Another heavyweight Disney star, Ashley Tisdale played Sharpay Evans in Disney's High School Musical trilogy and in her own spin-off, Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure. She also played major roles in The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and Phineas and Ferb. Now, after the first High School Musical movie, which, if you don't know, was huge, Ashley joined her castmates for High School Musical The Concert. While on the tour, which itself must have been both a dream come true and a nightmare with all the scheduling and little downtime, she also performed her own original song, He Said, She Said. However, similar to the experience that Jonas Brothers had, Disney made her change certain lyrics. In a TikTok, Ashley said that Disney made her change the line, kissing like that, to dancing like that for the tour. The original lyrics were, baby, I can see us moving like that. Baby, I can see us touching like that. Baby, I can see us kissing like that. We don't need no more, he said, she said. But while I get the image that Disney is trying to uphold here, I don't believe changing an artist's original work is fair. Just take the song out in its entirety. That would have been my idea. I think that would still not be okay. So just like, I don't know, leave it alone. And finally, in at number one, Alison Stoner. You may recognize Alison Stoner for her supporting roles in actually quite a few Disney Channel productions, like The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Camp Rock, Camp Rock 2, The Final Jam, and Phineas and Ferb. I remember them best from Cheaper by the Dozen, but that's just me. They have been one of those few Disney Channel veterans that has actually tried to make things better for other stars going forward, and they've been pretty vocal about some of Disney's shenanigans. In a 2021 YouTube interview, Alison said, while traversing extreme peaks and valleys of global fame, hidden medical hospitalizations, artistic milestones, rapid adultification, and multi-layered mistreatment I wish on no one, I narrowly survived the toddler to train wreck pipeline. That's a hell of a way to describe surviving Disney. They went on to say, as someone who lived it and witnessed thousands endure alongside me, I can attest that what is missing from the pipeline narrative are clear action plans for intervention, long-term prevention, and accountability from studios, agencies, and guardians. Unlike other stars, Allison turned their experience into ideas to improve the safety and well-being of other children in entertainment, such as requiring studios to have a mental health professional on set, 
improving child labor laws, and making media and industry literacy courses mandatory for guardians and representatives. One of my favorite quotes from the celeb though goes like this, quote, if we disrupt and heal the toddler to train wreck pipeline, we won't need another cautionary memoir. Number 10. Amber Heard According to the internet, Amber Heard is not only an actress, but she's also a humanitarian and a social activist. <laughs> okay, sure. She got her big film break starring in the horror movie All the Boys Love Mandy Lane, but I was genuinely shocked when I saw what movies she's also been in. Did you guys know that she was 406 in the movie Zombieland? And she was Seth Rogen's love interest in Pineapple Express. Oh, and she's the reason that Aquaman 2 is going to be delayed. Since 2016, Amber Heard and her ex-husband Johnny Depp have been throwing accusations at each other left and right. They were accused using each other of domestic altercations that may or may not have taken place during their brief one year marriage. Those accusations were confirmed during their very public trial in which Depp was suing Amber for defamation over a 2018 op-ed for the Washington Post. While the trial brought to light some disturbing truths on both sides, the biggest shock came when after several days of interviews, witness statements, and mountains of paperwork, a jury found that Amber's statements were in fact false and granted Depp the defamation. Amber had filed a countersuit, which she also kind of technically won, but it was way less than what Johnny got. Sound files, video footage, and witnesses gave concrete evidence that Amber was the instigator in many of their disputes and that she was subsequently fired from any and all future projects. Number 9. Ellen DeGeneres In her first on-air appearance since announcing the end of her eponymous daytime talk show, Ellen DeGeneres called the press cycle around allegations of toxicity at her workplace orchestrated and misogynistic. The announcement that her show would be cancelled came after months of receiving negative press following a BuzzFeed article reporting former employees alleging the environment was racially insensitive, filled with harassment, and, hey, bullying too. Ellen maintained in interviews that these allegations were not the reason that she would be leaving the show, simply claiming that the program was no longer challenging for her. While the BuzzFeed report did not allege toxic behavior by Ellen herself, several former staff members claimed the whole Be Kind motto was not genuine at all, which was reflected in a Twitter thread published by comedian Kevin T. Porter. He asked people to send in their horror stories about about the host's rudeness over the years and received over 2,000 replies. Warner Brothers opened an investigation and included that there were some flaws in the day-to-day -day management of the studio. Following this, Ellen appeared on the 18th season premiere of her show in 2020 and made an on-air apology to viewers, claiming responsibility, later stating that there was no way that she could know the true nature of the work environment due to the 255 employees that worked for her across multiple buildings. Uh, okay, uh, hey, uh, ever heard of a complaint box? Number 8. Katy Perry collects hair. The singer was once asked during an interview a very simple and cute question of, hey, hey, what's in your purse? And fans perhaps hoped that she would respond with like a bottle of Killer Queen, which was her, you know, cologne or, or cupcake crumbs. But Katy Perry answered with, oh, it's just a big empty bag, and then went on to describe what used to be in it. You see, she claimed that while in attendance at her first Grammy Awards ceremony, that she got to share a dressing room with Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift. Now, with all that excitement, you'd think she'd ask for a picture, right? Yeah, no, she asked them for a lock of each of their hair, which Katy found quote, like, totally awesome, but hey, that's weird because ugh. She then elaborated that she would tie little bows to each of them and, like, put them in her purse. This sounds so made up. Like, how could that be true? No, Miley and Taylor actually backed that story up online, and Perry's claim, and Perry claims to this day that Miley Cyrus is the most famous person in her purse and in her contact books. Nice. Number 7. Josie Smollett In 2019, American actor Josie Smollett, best known for his role in the Mighty Ducks movies and his time as Jamal Leon on the show Empire, approached the Chicago Police Department to report a hate crime. According to himself, two unknown individuals appeared from the shadows and began harassing Josie. They flung racial and homophobic slurs at Smollett while one attacker poured a flammable substance on him, and the other began to insert his head into some rope. News of this altercation made headlines in the following days. as it was announced that an investigation would be made to help piece together what exactly happened. Well, too bad for Josie, the Chicago PD are pretty good at their jobs. They quickly found that the two strangers in question were two Nigerian brothers named Abimbola and Olambinjo, who had worked as extras on the set of Empire. They raided the brothers' home and found documents confirming the pair had been paid $3,500 each to stage the event. They had video footage of the brothers purchasing the masks, gloves, and hats that are seen in the altercation footage. They also found receipts for the liquid and rope used 
during the attack. And not a great time to keep track of your finances, guys. In 2019, Smollett was charged with a class 4 felony for filing a false police report. And on top of that, the Chicago PD was suing him for $130,000 for wasting their time and resources on a fake incident. In the end, he spent 150 days in jail and coughed up a lot of the cash. Number 6. Kylie Cosmetics Kylie Jenner is the youngest of the Kardashian clan and is extremely successful for her age. In 2019, she made the cover of Forbes magazine as the youngest self-made billionaire ever following the successful partnership between her cosmetic brand and Ulta, a beauty salon company, which would allow the brand previously only available online and in random pop-up stores to be placed on shelves and in Ulta's 1,000 plus stores. This is unfortunate considering the true nature of just where these products come from. You see, rumors of Kylie's mistreatment for her employees were circulating for weeks after several claims from former employees were made public. It turns out every single thing that they said was true. Many people at the factory that mixed and packaged her makeup and beauty products would report that they were never actually given proper safety equipment that you would require to do that job. They were only given hair nets, lab coats, and safety goggles, leaving their hands and faces completely exposed. Workers would regularly report migraines and chemical burns varying in severity. Now, if this isn't bad enough, they were also forced to act as human test subjects for Kylie's new products. This woman was on the cover of Forbes magazine. She was so proud of her company for not testing products on animals, but like, can we agree that using people is like a billion times worse? Number 5. King Charles's Affair The recently crowned King of England has not always played by the rules. In 1981, Prince Charles married Lady Diana, who was 20 years old at the time, leaving a 13 year age gap between them. Behind closed doors, it was speculated that Charles was never actually in love with Diana in the first place, and that was later proven to be true. While things seemed pleasant on the outside, behind the scenes, Charles was secretly meeting up and having an affair with his ex-girlfriend Camilla Bowles. The alleged relationship was written about in the 1992 Diana, Her True Story, but in 1994, Charles actually confirmed the allegations in a documentary. You know, because that's the perfect place to do it. The couple filed for a divorce in 1996, and Diana died one year later. While the now king made it clear that he had no plans to remarry, he ended up getting remarried in 2005 to, oh hey look, it's Camilla Bowles, shocking. Number 4. Arnold's Love Child Action movie star and former California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger made headlines in 2011 with the revelation that an old rumor was in fact true. In 1996, Arnold was married to Maria Shriver, a member of the Kennedy family, and they were prepping to welcome their new son Christopher into the world. Arnie didn't prep by building them cribs or baby-proofing the outlets though, instead he decided to have an affair with his longtime housekeeper Mildred Baina. Around the same time Christopher was born, so was his illegitimate son, Joseph. Rumors began to rise after his wife noticed the strange and sudden absence of the housekeeper and wondered if there might have been a more sinister reason for her departure. It was later revealed in 2011 that Arnold decided to address those rumors and claim Joseph as his own. Turns out Arnold had given Mildred a large severance package back in the day so she could properly raise their son, leaving on what they call good terms. Well, eventually, after many years of trying and lots of paperwork, Maria and Arnold were divorced and he's now able to spend more time as a papa. Number 3. Donald Trump's Criminal Activities In 2006, Donald Trump was known solely as a wealthy the real estate mogul with a hit reality TV show, The Apprentice. He had recently been married to one Melania Trump and they had a newly born four month old baby. However, reports leaked that Trump was in the midst of an affair with adult film star Stormy Daniels after she filed a civil suit claiming the contract he made her sign to keep quiet was invalid. Daniels claimed that herself and Trump had shared an intimate relationship for roughly a year during his marriage to Melania. These weren't the first allegations of an affair as Trump has been back and forth in the media since the 1970s being accused by like 26 women of misconduct. While these rumors never held any merit at first, the truth was finally set free. After being the most chaotic president in recent history, it was announced in March that Trump was going to be arrested on 34 separate violations of a New York law against falsifying business documents to conceal another crime. Over the years, he was essentially taking company money and using it to pay off anyone who may have been a threat to him, both personally or politically. Thanks for the free money, Donnie. Number 2. Paula Deen Paula Deen is basically Martha Stewart just from the south. Paula opened her first restaurant in a Best Western Lodge in Savannah and called it The Lady in 1991. She went on to own and operate several of her own restaurants as well as hosting a very popular cooking show called Paula's Home Cooking. Paula shared her recipes for delicious home cooked meals and took the cooking world by storm until 2013 when it was revealed that maybe Paula shouldn't be allowed to have a phone. Rumors had been circulating of a more sinister persona buried beneath the warm sweet 
southern lady we saw on TV, and it turned out those rumors were confirmed by Paula herself. Paula admitted to using racial slurs on her social media posts in the past. She would post these rants and aggressive comments, and then she would just immediately delete them to like avoid being blasted in the media. Well, hey, the internet's forever, Paula, and Paula's cooking show got cancelled. <laughs> it's all good though. She started another show on the very successful streaming device, Roku. You know? So so popular. Just so popular. Number one, Michael Richards. Michael Richards played one of the most famous sitcom characters of all time on one of the most famous sitcoms of all time. He played Cosmo Kramer on the show Seinfeld for nine years, and in that time made fans laugh and cry with his hilarious antics and wild lifestyle. Unfortunately, those laughs and cries turned to booze and anger. In 2006, Michael made an appearance at the Laugh Factory factory in California, where he went on a racially fueled tirade after responding to a heckler in the audience. Rumors of his bias had been circulating for a few years, as Richard wasn't a stranger to using choice words and phrases in his stand-up acts that were considered offensive and racist. Since the reveal of his true behavior, Richards has received an enormous amount of backlash and has given up comedy for good. He was also brought on as a guest on Jerry Seinfeld's popular show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, and addressed the situation with Seinfeld. Richards seemed very apologetic and he understood that what he said and did was wrong. But hey man, the words that he spoke that night still circulate the internet to this day. So, sorry Michael. 